Chris, where's he? What? And welcome back to my channel. I'm giving you a break from all the vlogmas and the Christmassy content that is currently crowding your sub boxes, I'm very sure. I'm giving you a little story time slash vlog experience of my very first tattoo. I got a tattoo on Friday the 15th of December, which was the Friday that has just passed. By the time you're watching this, it will probably be about a week since I got my tattoo. I got it done in a shop called Monsters Inc. And I originally inquired about a tattoo the day of my birthday. They produced a date that I unfortunately couldn't go to and then on the Thursday I was booked in for the following day at 4pm. I was messed around quite a lot by another tattoo artist, I'm not going to say who it is because that's not what this video is about. I let this artist know about three weeks in advance before my birthday that I would want a tattoo on my birthday. We didn't get confirmation that the tattoo was actually going ahead until the day before and then we didn't get a time until the night before. In my opinion, in my humble humble opinion and it could be different for other people, this is just my experience with this one tattoo artist who was very hard to work with, extremely unprofessional clearly had other clients that he was closer to on top of his priority clearly me and Waverly who is the person I was supposed to be getting, but like buddy tattooing with we clearly weren't on top of his priority list and I don't think he had any intention of coming to my house he kind of ruined my birthday so there's that whereas as soon as I booked in uh, with an inquiry of Monsters Inc I was booked into them within a few hours of me inquiring it's just the fact that they produced a date that I could not go to because it was a Saturday and I was going shopping that day but within like two days of me inquiring about a tattoo they already had a date set for me it was confirmed and I was going whereas the other tattoo artist it took him three weeks to actually give me a time and to actually say that I was having an appointment with him so I would rather go to Monsters Inc and that's where I went so without further ado here is my first tattoo experience. This is a shortened version of the quote, I go to seek a great perhaps from looking for Alaska, which is my favourite book written by John Green. I have read it a total of 10 times in my lifetime and I have not looked back since. I knew from the moment I saw Dodie's tattoo of her favourite quote from La La Land, a bit of madness is key, that I wanted a quote from looking for Alaska somewhere on my body. Within the style and the placement, I decided to shorten it down because it wouldn't fit on my bicep as the full quote. The style is very very similar to Dodie's, obviously the wording is a bit different because it's a different quote but I really really like it and the similarities to Dodie is exactly what I was looking for and what I love about the tattoo. Secret Great perhaps to me means embracing all situations and seeing them as an adventure because I'm quite an adventurous person. I like to think new opportunities as little adventures that I can conquer in little quests. So Secret Great perhaps was really good for me because it was like I'm seeking something greater than I am and you always need to strive for things that are bigger and better than you to become better. So I walked in on Friday the 15th with a whole plastic wallet I'm talking a whole plastic wallet full of identification. I catastrophized about not getting the tattoo. I really wanted this tattoo. I did not sleep and I couldn't until I had this tattoo. I was sick with fear. I'm not talking the fear of the pain of the tattoo because I knew it was going to hurt because I've had friends that had tattoos before. I wasn't prepared to walk out of that tattoo studio with nothing yet again. I did not want to be disappointed yet again after being disappointed by the other tattoo artists. I was more fearful of walking out of that tattoo party with nothing rather than the pain of having an actual tattoo. We greeted the receptionist at the door as she was probably on her break and she was having just a cigarette at the door and she told me to go in and we just took a seat. She was immediately friendly and happy to let us in. She opened the door for us and it wasn't a few seconds until she came and joined us in the store. By this point, I am so terrified of disappointment that I think I'm going to be sick everywhere. The pain hasn't even crossed my mind yet. I just want this tattoo so, so, so badly because I've been really messed around before this point and I would do anything. This is why I took my birth certificate, I took exam certificates, I took my GCSE results, anything that had my date of birth on, I took it. Seems silly now because she never asked for my ID, she just kind of assumed because I messaged her saying that it was my birthday and then Callum reckons that she went onto my page and saw everyone wishing me happy birthday and kind of just believed me anyway. It truly is about the way that you present yourself in the tattoo studio. If you're confident, they'll treat you like an adult, but if you act like a child, they will definitely treat you like a child. It's fine to be scared and to be quaking your boots, but please don't show it. They will just assume that you're underage because 
if you're scared then you clearly have something to hide. The staff were really nice to me, um, I've had a really good experience with Monsters Inc as a first tattoo experience and a first engagement with the staff and the store as a whole. A lot of people have said bad things about Monsters Inc as a tattoo parlour but I decided to take them under my wing and kind of have an experience for myself and decided to gather my own experiences rather than listen to other people. I was led into a little room with a chair and a tattoo gun and like a little steel case thing that had a pot of black ink on it. In the room was me, the tattooist that was doing my tattoo, the receptionist who was lent against the mirror, another tattooist and another person doing their tattoo. And can I just say how comforting it is to have someone getting a tattoo while you're getting yours, especially if it's your first one. This lady clearly had a lot of tattoos, she's been experienced, she's been there before so many times. It only took eight minutes. Yeah. Eight whole minutes. Can you imagine if I didn't cancel with the other guy that messed me around and he eventually came to my house on a Thursday morning, I took the morning off college and blah 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 blah. Can you imagine if I didn't cancel on him and he came in and he did eight minutes of work and then fucked off? I would have been so pissed. I all that messing around for eight minutes of work. Here is the part that everyone has probably been waiting for when they click on this video. How much did it hurt? Well, I'm not gonna lie, it hurt. It's a needle going into your skin repeatedly on purpose with ink in it. It's gonna hurt. It doesn't hurt in the conventional pain way. It's a totally different pain that I don't think I've ever experienced before. It was more like an annoying pain of like someone tapping you over and over again, like you know when you sat on the bus to like Twin Lakes or something, or like Owen Towers and there's a really annoying kid that's behind you poking you. It felt like that, just on like a bigger scale, like he has a needle and he's like doing this in the back of your fucking neck. It was annoying and it did hurt in some bits, like when he went over my freckles, I have some freckles on my arm. It also hurt when he did like long lines, like if I can show you a close with this it would be great. Um, when he went from the P to the E, that really hurt, and when he went from the R to the H, that really hurt. A lot of people have been comparing getting tattoos to the pain of self-harm, and I don't really see the connection. Self-harm stings, and I don't think the tattoo had the stinging aspect of it. Like, it was like an annoying pain, as I just said, it was more like someone poking you, but I feel like self-harm is more straight. If you're watching this to gather kind of like what your tattoo might feel like, or you know, how your first tattoo might hurt, you're never really going to understand the pain until you have one yourself, because it's one of those things where you never really know until it happens to you. It's gonna hurt, but it just depends how much and if you can tolerate it or not. Personally, for me, I think it wasn't worth fainting over, but it still hurt, it was annoying, but it's worth it in the end. After my tattoo was done, it took about five minutes to get like different shots of it and like videos and pictures. I paid my 20 quid and off we went. I bought some bupanthin, which is like nappy rash cream, and my dad actually told me to get some, and he has like literally loads of tattoos, he's actually covered in them. So I took his advice and brought some nappy rash cream. I started applying it twice a day, but I found that the nappy rash cream was making the ink come off. I don't know if I'm using it too often, or not often enough, or something, but I have stopped using it now, and I probably won't use it again. I think when I wrote this, it was just starting to scab, but I think it has finished now. It is kind of got this, like, little scaly white layer, and I messaged Waverly about it last night, and she said it was totally normal. It looks like psoriasis, and it feels really bumpy. It looks a bit like psoriasis, but it's not. People have told me, like, oh, be careful of the itchiness of a tattoo. It's not the pain, it's the itch afterwards. Don't itch it, don't scratch it, don't pick it. I haven't picked or scratched at it, but my god it's fucking itchy. Like I didn't listen to them, I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, I've had psoriasis. This is different. It's like underneath the skin, so even if you did itch it, it doesn't work. There was my first tattoo experience. If I was to give new tattooees advice, this is what it would be. Don't show that you are scared. If you act like a fumbling child, they'll treat you like a fumbling child that's scared of a tattoo. I wouldn't recommend getting a tattoo when you aren't 18 because you kind of don't know what you want on your body. If I was to get a tattoo at 13, I would have a Janoskian's dog symbol on me. And I hate the Janoskians now. There's a little bit of hindsight for you. Bring as much proof of ID as possible. If you don't have any solid ID, like a citizen's card, or an, like a, just a driver's license or provisional, bring as much as you can. Literally, I filled a plastic wallet and I shit you not, take as much ID as you can and I think you'll be okay. Think about exactly where you want it and how big you want it before you walk into the studio. Cover your tattoo when you go outside for the first few weeks. Being it hidden for the first few weeks and not showing off as much as you want to is worth the pigment staying as clean as it can. Video your experience, whether you make YouTube videos like this one or not. If you're looking for a less painful place on your first tattoo, 
bicep. I am not really an experienced person with tattoos, but this really didn't hurt as much as it would my wrist or my foot or my ribs. Oh, can you imagine? Also really good for if you've got really big muscles like me. Well, not really big, but like if you've got really defined muscles because you can make it dance. Seek a great Okay. And the last tip that I have for new tattooies is take someone with you. Take a family member, take a friend, take your boyfriend, take anyone that you want, take the fucking dog down the street. Take someone with you. Thank you so much for watching my first tattoo experience. If you liked, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell because most people miss my uploads. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week for another video. One, four, three. Bye. Mwah.